Hello there friends and welcome! For this year's first Pathfinder Enhanced video we have yet another special racial archetype, the Half-Elf, Master of All, Rogue. And you'll be going Trickster Legend for the amazing synergy it gives you. With this build, your character will pretty much slice and dice through enemies. I'm not kidding, you'll have higher than 16 attacks per round. Not counting all of your attacks of opportunity, you just charge at the enemies and they'll explode. It's that good. All from dual wielded daggers, with very high critical range at 40% and great damage to around 200 on normal hits and up to 500 criticals. And we'll be combining it with Vivisectionist for the highest physical scores possible thanks to our Mutagen, 60 plus dexterity and even more sneak attack stacks, higher than 17 even, while also having access to powerful rogue talents that let you dispel enemies and also debuff them with just your attacks. As a legend, you can also achieve extreme hit points, higher than 1000. And for a true master of all, you'll also get to have the highest amount for the classic rogue skills, mobility, trickery, stealth, perception, and also use magic device for scrolls. So without further ado, let us get into our half-elf master of all trickster legend build. Alright, so the master of all, well, it's one of those kinda underwhelming special racial archetypes. I mean, it's inoffensive really, you don't lose anything that important, but you also don't gain anything special, I'm afraid. You lose 3 dice of sneak attack, which can be a bit annoying, but we end up with more than enough anyways. What you gain in return is first bardic knowledge, so just like a bard, you can add half your master of all class levels for all the lore and knowledge skills as a bonus, and also 3 skill focus of your choice which can be nice for a dexterity rogue with many skills, so we'll be the skill monkey of the party. Now, please understand that this build can work with any rogue archetype, ideally knife master, and also any race. I'm just going for master of all and half-elf because it's a video about the ratio archetype. As far as half-elves, just like humans, they can get a plus two to any ability of choice. They also have a bonus to perception, immunity to sleep. In the spirit of master of all, and having as many important skills as possible in one character, go with basic for yet another skill focus. In this case, stealth is the way to go. Stealth is pretty important in that it lets you avoid random map encounters, and those checks can actually have a pretty high DC. For the background, it's the usual street urchin and pickpocket, and for once it actually fits our character like a glove, since we are a thief. As far as your ability points, you want to max out dexterity, I usually prefer strength builds because dexterity builds have a feat tax, you need weapon finesse and also mythic weapon finesse, but as a rogue you can get both for free. You already start with weapon finesse at level 1, and at level 3, through finesse training, you can choose to make any of the weapons here, in our case daggers, have their damage scale based on dexterity instead of strength. As for Y20 instead of 19 a character creation, well, as a legend, we'll get to upgrade this even further later on. Also 14 constitution for a nice layer of hit points just in case to keep you safe. I would also dump either wisdom or charisma because they are better useless for you to start with 14 intelligence. You can dump strength too if you prefer since we are getting dexterity added to damage and AB anyways. But I wouldn't go lower than 8 because some feats we'll be getting at the end game, they require a bit strength. As far as skill points, as I said, this character can cover quite a lot of the most important skills. As a dexterity-based character, you certainly want mobility, trickery, and stealth. Also perception, so you can detect traps and disarm them. Use magic device always helps. As always, the penalty from charisma doesn't matter because you don't need high ranks in this. The last skill point is up to you. You can even go with persuasion, although you won't have high charisma. But as a legend, you can increase your skills even past 20. I would go for Knowledge World, I think it fits a rogue, and we'll even get a few extra points from our Bardic Knowledge, Master of All Special skill. Now as far as feats, we only have one at level 1, and like with any rogue, you definitely want to be dual wielding, so two weapon fighting. We'll be going with daggers because there are quite a lot of powerful daggers in the game. They don't have as high critical range as Kukri's though, but Kukri's will require you to get martial weapons proficiency. I don't think it's needed, daggers are more than enough. There are certainly way better daggers than Kukris in the game too, with more powerful properties. Plus, as a trickster, you'll be getting 13 to 20 critical range anyways, which is huge considering all of the attacks you have per round. 
For deity, since we have to start as a trickster, legend only comes later, go with any that allows a chaotic alignment, which fits a rogue character. Someone like Caden is fine, there's even some unique dialogue here too, for the legend path later on. And then chaotic, good. I am actually surprised that half-elves don't have facial hair options, I'm pretty sure lore-wise they should be able to get facial hair anyways. For level 2, Slippery Mind. This lets you add your dexterity modifier, which will be huge with this build, to your will saving throws against mind affecting conditions, the most annoying of them all. After all, you don't really want your rogue character being caught confused or charmed, as that can be very dangerous for your other party members. For level 3, Weapon Focus and then Daggers. We have some penalties to AB when dual building, but daggers are light weapons, which means lesser penalties. Still, weapon focus can help overcome it. And of course, finesse training daggers to apply our dexterity to dagger damage. For your first master of all skill focus, I would go with mobility. There are many mobility checks in the game, usually to travel between map sections. If you fail those, your whole party will take damage, which is very annoying. So I like to have this as early as possible, especially for chapter 1. At level 4, increase dexterity, which is also what you should increase on all of the other levels. Then for level 4, go with combat trick and double slice to increase our offhand damage. Now at level 5, I would rather enter into vivisectionist, at least for just a single level, because we already have the highly powerful debilitating injury ability from Master of All, which can sharply reduce enemies AC, especially against your rogue attacks, but also for your party members. It's minus 2 against party members and minus 4 against your rogue, which is huge, even just at this level. But anyways, alchemist and vivisectionist, so we can get an extra dice of sneak attack, but most importantly the mutagen. At the early levels it's only going to last 10 minutes, but that's more than enough for plenty of map areas. A plus 4 stacking bonus to dexterity because it is alchemical can help a lot, as everything we have is coming from dexterity anyways besides hit points. In the levels that you don't gain skill points for all of your skills, I would ignore world and use magic device. The others are more important overall. Then for a feat, combat reflexes. This is way better when combined with outflank, which you'll be getting soon enough. Vivisectionists can also pick spells, but most of them you'll be getting later on. Anyways, you can learn all of them from scrolls too, just like a wizard. But the most important ones are here, mostly shield and true strike for the early game. Now I would resume progression into Master of All, until we get our advanced rogue talents in a few levels. At level 7, we have two feats. First, Outplank is a must-have, especially for the wielding builds for even more bonuses to AB and more attacks of opportunity too. Then go for Combat Trick and Piranha Strike, which will increase the damage of both your dual wielding attacks, main hand and off hand. The damage isn't as high as if you were two-handing, but it still helps as it will be applied to every single one of your attacks and has amazing synergy with the legend mythic path later on. For level 9, improve it to weapon fighting for an extra offhand attack and then combat trick, lunge. Lunge will add reach to our attacks even with daggers. When you combine this with size enhancing spells such as enlarge person you get even higher reach. It is true that enlarge also reduces your dexterity but you know a minus 2 is nothing for this build. And trust me, reach is that good. The higher your reach, the more distance you can put between yourself and the enemy when attacking, even at melee. Which means your daggers will become as if spears, so you're basically shooting daggers at the enemies. The end result is your character will not only be safe from enemy attacks, because they will focus on the other party members that are closer to them, but this is also amazing to attack enemies without having to move closer to them, especially for turn-based mode, because there you can't really move while retaining all of your attacks. For your second skill focus, at level 10, Perception. Perception is probably one of the skills that has the most checks in the game. There are checks for it everywhere, usually for hidden items, and also to review some world map areas. Now at level 11, go for Improved Initiative. This will help because when going Legend, you won't have access to Mythic Initiative. Now for your first advanced rogue talents, we actually want a lot of them, but choose between either Dispelling Attack, so you can keep on dispelling enemies. Every single one of your strikes will attempt to dispel enemy buffs, which is great. And eventually we can get a lot of caster level boost to this to ensure it works. But my preferred choice here is actually Opportunist, because it is essentially a free attack per round. Now, from level 12 onwards, 
is when I would resume progression into Vivisectionist until full 20 levels. The thing with Master of All is, we aren't really getting anything special now on Mars. We already have two stacks of debilitating injury, access to advanced talents, and this is the best part. If you qualify for advanced talents with Master of All, you'll be able to pick them even as early as Vivisectionist level 2. Here we are, such as for example Crippling Strike, or once again Dispelling Attack. But we have a lot of other feats to get before, so I would go with Combat Trick and Improve at Critical at last. And of course Dagger, this is very important for this build. Now, for level 13, this is usually when you should already have access to Mythic rank 4, which means Perception 1 and 2 Trickster Mythic Tricks, to qualify you for the Trickster Special Critical Feats, which we shall retain as a legend. So be sure to level your character to Mythic 4 before getting to level 13 as always. And what you want is the first of the special trickster feats, Improved Improved Critical Dagger. This will already change your dagger's critical hits to the same of a Kukri. For level 14, Combat Trick and the second trickster special feat. So now our daggers will already have 13 to 20 critical range, which is amazing. For more VP section spells, well, I already have a guide explaining the best arcane spells in the game that you can check to the side here or in the pinned comments down below, so I'll try to keep this simple. But anyways, false life. And remember, you can learn the rest through scrolls at the same level. For level 15, the last of the trickster special feats for an extra critical multiplier to damage with our daggers than animal aspects to buff your pets. For level 16, well, if you didn't pick the spelling attack before, I would get it now, because we are already at chapter 4, close to chapter 5 even, and a lot of the enemies now come from buffed with many effects. Then for level 17, greater to weapon fighting at last. We get it somewhat late, but you know, opportunists can make up for it. For level 3 spells, honestly chances are someone else can already provide haste for you, since we get it very late, at 17 only. I would go with protection from Eros Communal. Then at level 18, Peril Mutagen, kinda late, but the extra bite attack doesn't matter as much as our dagger hits. Also, very soon you'll be getting like 16 levels added at once from the Legend Mythic Path boost. So that's a lot of feats and discoveries you'll be getting added to your character at the same time. For more spells, displacement. For level 19, I like to pick the last special trickster feat, Meta Magic and Completely Normal spell. This can help a lot with your Alchemist spells. Then you might as well pick Haste here. For level 20, Infusion. Then Echolocation spell, just in time for Infusion. With this, None of your party members will require the blind fight feat. For level 21, well, we might as well get Dazzling Display and Shatter Defenses. I'm afraid we have to delay it a lot. It's just that the Trickster feats are way more important. Plus, this build has such high dexterity that you'll get enough AB anyways. And with high initiative, you do catch enemies flat-footed for the first round of battle, which is the same effect as Shatter Defenses. For more spells, Greater False Life. For 22, Greater Mutagen at last, and then Greater Invisibility. For 23, Shatter Defenses. Level 5, Alchemist spells are rather poor, but we'll be able to get level 6 spells as level 5 ones, since we have Meta Magic completely normal spell. Anyways, just pick something like Death Ward or Restoration here. For 24, Feral Wings. Then at 25 on wards, well, at the beginning of this guide I said we would be getting some strength feats, mostly power attack, if only so we can get Cleaving Finish and Improved Cleaving Finish. Why? Well, because we can, we have an abundance of feats as a legend anyways. Plus, these feats will grant you more attacks per round. Do note that Power Attack will not stack with Piranha Strike. For 26, Grand Mutagen at last. Now, level 6 Alchemy spells are pretty good. Ideally, you want Transformation. For allies, I don't have high base attack bonus, like pets. Sadly, this will not go past level 20, so for your legend themselves, it's not really that good. I'm afraid they nerfed the spell. For 27, Cleave. Also useless at this point, it's just for Cleaving Finish soon enough. Then Heal. For 28, Combat Trick, Cleaving Finish. So now whenever we kill an enemy, we get a free attack. Then, well, Dragon Kind 1 lets you turn any allies, including pets, into dragons. It can be fun. For 29, Great Cleave. And then you might as well pick Legendary Proportions. For 30, true mutagen at last, for massive increases to all of your physical scores, it doesn't get any better than this. For other discoveries, they don't matter that much, you might as well go with something like preserve organs, and then crippling strike. Now at level 30, we'll already be at 10 master of all and 20 vivisectionist, 
We can't increase any class level past 20, so we have to go with something else. You have a few different choices, but the one I like the best now is Slayer. We'll be getting a little bit more sneak attack, also study target, which is great, but most importantly, even more feats and talents. Ideally, you want to keep two high base attack bonus classes for the synergy with Legend and higher damage through Piranha Strike and Power Attack. You can also go with Ranger and Demon Slayer if you want. And you might as well go with Slayer and Deliverer. It's not that the benefits will matter that much, I mean, the main benefit you only get at level 40. If you stay chaotic, good, this will work against demons which are chaotic, evil, so two steps away from your alignment. For just a little bit extra damage, you do lose two Slayer talents, but at this point you have more than enough anyways. It's up to you. You can even go with the normal Slayer, and at this point it will still be amazing. Then at level 31, improve at Cleaving Finish, so your character really is never running out of attacks. For 33, honestly we kinda already have all of the best feats we could want. You might as well go for a complete sneak attacker for an extra dice of sneak. Then for your talent at 34, wearing strike. For 35, you might as well pick something like hammer the gap. And then improve at evasion. For 37, well toughness. For 38, well blinding strike can be a bit fun. Or just go with double debilitation. There's also familiar and hair familiar for higher initiative. For 39, anything you want, really. I'll just grab Stealthy for bonus to mobility and stealth, in the spirit of a master of all skills. Now let us cover Mythic Progression for our Legend Master of All. For your first ascension, ideally you want close to the Abyss, for the extra gore attack. Even if you want to add dexterity to damage with this, we still add all of our sneak attack procs to it. It's essentially an extra attack per round, so why not? But you can also go with a bit of fun for the extra bonus to your skill checks. It's just that this build has high enough skill ranks as is without this. More attacks though are always great. Now, for Mythic 1 as a legend, because you only get Mythic 1 and 2, and please remember that I already have a complete guide explaining everything about the legend path, you can check to the side here or in the comments down below anyways. The best one overall is Last Stand, nothing will be as efficient as this one. Then for Mythic level 2, Mythic Piranha Strike. It's a bit sad that we lose Mythic Critical, but Piranha Strike has way higher synergy with the Legends, increasing base attack bonus scores. Now for your Trickster Mythic progression before you become a Legend, it is pretty much the same for almost all of my Trickster builds. Ever Ready at Mythic 3, then Arcana 1 as a trick. For Mythic 4, Mythic Critical Daggers. Then Perception 1 and 2, this is very important to qualify you for the Trickster feats. Your level 5, 6 and 7 Mythic feats and abilities can be anything you want, such as Mythic Charge, which helps a lot when dual wielding, provided you have someone to give you pounds, like a Scald party member, or Relentless Assault. For feats, go with Mythic to Weapon Fighting. Then for other tricks, World 1, 2 and 3 to qualify your allies for any feat they want. It does require you to respect them, but... It is the biggest synergy you'll be able to have before going to a legend. Alright, now let's cover gear for our half-elf master of all legend. The amulet as always, the best one is Velexius. You'll want as high dexterity as possible for maximum damage and attack bonus. Earlier, just go for amulets that increase your initiative. For armor, you have two choices. If you want the highest AC possible, I mean, you can achieve decent AC with this character, even if they're not fully focused into it because of your massive dexterity bonus. Well, stick to Haramakis, because they have uncapped dexterity modifier. On the other hand, since AC doesn't really matter much for us, we have massive reach, we're basically shooting our daggers like spears. You can go with armors that have better passives, like... Chainmail of Comradery, as usual, for the great plus 4 bonus to damage to all your attacks. Web Strider earlier, for a plus 2 morale bonus to dexterity. And its upgrade, Snake Skin, for a plus 4 profane. You can get it from the latest DLC, the Treasure of the Midnight Isles. For the last dungeon, however, Nocticula can return her profane gift to you. For short, the best one is almost always Wandering Coleman. Especially for this rogue character, because it also increases your trickery. The bonus to attacks of opportunity is great too, as we can't afford the ever-ready mythic ability with a legend. For belts, at first belts of dexterity, then dexterity and constitution, but ultimately all of them. You can also go with mangling frenzy if you want higher damage on critical hits. For gloves, for any dual wielding character, fences gift of course, for the bonus damage to the offhand. For boots, well, 
Ronak sacrifices the best as we are fully dexterity focused, and this can grant a plus 8 to dexterity as enhancement. Also bonuses to mobility. Since you are already getting a massive dexterity from this, you might as well go for the Mangling Frenzy belt. As far as helmets, well, for the earlier parts of the game, helmets that increase initiative like Wind Master. But eventually you just want the head of the bitter end, it's really OP for the stacking boost to AB, which by the way applies to all of your dual wielding attacks. And you might as well combine it with the Broken Trickster as usual. Otherwise, just settle for the goggles of Piercing Gaze. For cloaks, it's pretty simple. Cloaks of resistance with the highest modifier. Both the Trickster and the Legend Cloak are kinda poor. For rings, the Ring of Triumphant Advance is pretty much always the best thing slot for almost any character. And besides that, I also enjoy the Ring of Guiding Star for this build, because we can't really afford Mythic Initiative. The Bane of Spirit is as powerful as always to convert your whole damage into irresistible force, but it is too pricey for a Legend, because they pay more when it comes to the hit point costs, which is based on your level, and we have double the available levels. Just equip this on other characters, and have them activate it on your main character. Or braces is the usual for dual wielding characters, the bracers of heavy hand. But later on you can also go for abrupt onslaught. Now let us cover weapons and quick slots for our legend. Well, as far as weapons, I went with daggers. As I said, you have some pretty powerful daggers available. For the main hand, Retriever's Claw. It has a unique effect of an increased critical multiplier. Since we can't afford mythic critical with this build, even better for us. With a Scald, you can increase it even further, 4 times 5 For the offhand, the best dagger is by far Hasty Eradicator, because this dagger has the super unique effect of granting you 2 additional attacks. It doesn't stack with Haste, but it doesn't matter, because the attack granted from Haste is only applied to the main hand. This is part of why we have such high attacks per round, 5 with the offhand. Now for quick slots, well, Jarsig X, as always, for the extra damage. The Imp familiar for the bonus to Trickery and Stealth, Lesser Extend Rods, if you want to extend some of your Alchemist spells, the Signet of Hauser's Pretilio as usual to increase any skill of choice, we have Extreme Skills, don't forget you can cast any scroll, especially Divine spells for support when needed, last but not least you can always give your character a close to full scaling path through the Triceratops statuette for the Bismuth Dinosaur path, and there's always the Lucky Dice for some minor benefits. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Half-Elf, Master of All Legend build. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member, as I truly appreciate your support to help the channel keep going. Thank you for watching, and see you next time!